Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. And I'm going to read a little bit more of our book, Poison Power, by Dr. John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin. We're on Chapter 6, but I thought we deserved a little magic card again after uh, the news that Dana was arrested because we're telling the truth. He's not arrested for what he said. He's been arrested for what he is doing. So this is what we get. It says... Reach for the stars. When you look for the best in others, you discover the best in yourself. That's great. And actually, you know what? That ha that speaks exactly to Jay Cullen and... What's his name? Jay Cullen and... They're sort of like the salt and pepper, right? Jay Cullen and... I don't know his name. I can't think of him. I'll think of it in a minute. This is what I think about Jay Cullen. Ken Buesler. That's his name. <laughs> they are not nuclear scientists. They have not read this book. They have not read this book, which is the book they ought to read. Radiation and Human Health, a comprehensive investigation of evidence relating low-level radiation to cancer and other diseases. If they would read this book, there is no way they would participate with the nuclear cartel who is telling them to frame things, that it's safe. No, it's not safe. It fits within the allowable limits, but it's not safe. So, let's look for the good in others. Let's read that again. When you look for the best in others, you discover the best in yourself. See? Oh, look at how cute those stars are. So I'm going to get reading. We're in Chapter 6. How safe are nuclear reactors? Routine... Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Routine operations. Discussion of the safety of nuclear reactors has two components. Number one, the normal day-to-day -day operations in which the reactors are permitted to release radioactivity into the environment. Huh. And two, the accident situation wherein the reactor may release large quantities of radioactivity into the environment. Fukushima. In the normal day-to-day -day operations, like Hanford or Columbia Generating Station, Nuclear power plants are permitted by law to release radioactivity in the form of radioactive atoms to the environment in gaseous and liquid discharges. These are essentially two regulations. There are there are essentially two regulations concerned with these releases. Hold on. The regulations was rep the regulation which represents the primary standard is the dosage that could be delivered to an individual or to the population at large. Right, I've been talking about this. We have discussed this primary standard earlier in the book and have indicated that the standard is much too high. The maximum permissible concentration of various radionuclides in the air, MPCA, and water, MPCW, that are permitted to be released outside of the restricted areas of the nuclear reactor are called secondary standards. Wow! I had no idea. The primary standard should be delivered from the secondary standards. But, as we indicated earlier, the secondary standards, the maximum permissible concentrations that are listed in Title 10 of the Code of Federal Regulations, do not permit this. The MPCs that are tabulated in Title 10 of the Code of Federal Regulations apply only to the situation where individuals are breathing the contaminated air or drinking the contaminated water. Holy fuck. I'm going to look that up. I swear to God, I am going to look that up. I'm going to look this up. Title 10, Federal Code of Regulations, and see what it is now. They do not take into account the fact that the contamination of 
contaminated air and the contaminated water will result in the contamination of food consumed by man. This is an extremely important factor in terms of dosage that would be received by man from nuclear reactor releases. Holy fuck! I am going to read that whole thing again because I... You can skip forward, but I'm reading it because this fucking is unloading on my brain right now. In the normal day-to-day -day operations, nuclear power plants are permitted by law to release radioactivity in the form of radioactive atoms to the environment in gaseous or liquid discharges. There are essentially two regulations concerned with these releases. The regulation which represents the primary standard is the dosage that could be delivered to an individual or to the population at large. That's the primary. We have discussed this primary standard earlier in this book and have indicated that the standard is much too high. The, permiss the maximum permissible concentration of the various radionuclides in air, MPCA, and water, MPCW, that are permitted to be released outside the restricted area of a nuclear reactor are, cons are called secondary standards. So the maximum permissible amounts are called sta secondary standards. The first standard, the primary standard, is the dosage that could be delivered. Okay, so the maximum permissible dosage are the secondary. What a fu Even this, doesn't this fucking piss you off? They mind fuck you on just even trying to tell you what the fucking levels are. God dang it, man, this really pisses me off. The primary standard should be derived from the secondary standards. But as we indicated earlier, the secondary standards, the maximum permissible concentrations that are listed in Title 10 of the Code of Federal Regulations, do not permit this. Do you get this? What the fuck? This whole fucking industry is illegal? The MPCs that are tabulated in Title 10 of the Code of Federal Regulations apply only to the situation where individuals are breathing contaminated air or drinking the contaminated water. They do not take into account the fact that contaminated air and contaminated water will result in the contamination of the foods consumed by man. This is an extremely important factor of the dosage that would be received by man from reactor releases. Oh my God, you guys. I continue out of respect for you. The proponents of the nuclear power industry state that the exposure from the nuclear power plants would be considerably lower than those of the guidelines. They indicate that individuals in the near vicinity of nuclear reactors would be expo exposed to no more than 5 to 10 years, 5 to 10 milligrams per year value. And that individuals, that as individuals lived further and further away from the reactor, their exposure would drop off very rapidly from this 5 to 10 milligram per year value lies because of the wind factor. Moreover, they indicate that the design objectives and the operation of existing power plants are such that the actual releases of radioactivity from the power plants are no more than 1% of the releases allowed by the AEC's MPC values. The state of Minnesota has proposed emission standards that are 50-fold lower than those of the AEC. At the symposium titled Nuclear Power and the Environment, held at the University of Minnesota in October 1969, members of the audience repeatedly asked the question, if reactors are only going to release a small amount of radioactivity, 
that you indicate, then why are you so reluctant to make guidelines more restrictive and adopt Minnesota regulations? Congressman Craig Hosmer, a member of the Joint Congressional Committee of Atomic Energy, stated that if the standards were lowered, he doubted if the reactors could operate safely. Well, what the fuck? They're not operating safely. Commissioner Theos Thompson made essentially the same statement in testimony before the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. Do you guys feel betrayed as an American right now? I'm fucking feeling stabbed in the goddamn heart. In recent hearings before the JEC, the following exchange took place between the AEC commissioners James Ramey and Thompson and Congressman Chet Holyfield and Hosmer. We will reprint their exact words with only a bit of interpretation. Okay. Oh my god, I gotta scoop my chair up for this. This is unfucking believable. Okay, Chairman Holyfield. One other point I wanted to bring out was that the newer plants and the plants that are now being put into line commercially commercially and which do not have experiments involved in their continuous operation show consistently a concentration of limit of less than one percent is that not right or am i wrong in reading the chart end of quote uh holy field means that the radioactivity escaping from the plant is less than one percent that is goffin's comment dr thompson that is correct you are reading the chart correctly i would like to make the statement that though there may be Times when even in spite of careful inspection, which is always done, and the check and the checkout to assure that the surface of these fuel elements is free from uranium, the effluent levels will rise above this one percent, but still be within the current part twenty limits. It is therefore important that we have what I will call an operating cushion. So from 0 to 20, I guess, is an operating cushion. Big fucking cushion. You have talked with Dr. Trotter. You talked with Dr. Trotter the other morning, and you asked him whether there was a reasonable cushion of safety between the effects of radiation and the present standards which are set up. What I am talking about is another cushion between the part, stand, the part 20 standards and the normal operating level. That cushion is important for the reliability of these plants as a part of electrical utility system. This is why they fucking have problems all the time. Assume a utility builds a nuclear reactor and then say they go from 1% to 3% of the 20 part limit. Then if we have set a lower limit at 1%, this reactor would have to be shut down. You bet, stupid fucker. It would not really be shut down because of a safety reason, but simply because somebody had arbitrarily established a very low limit. Don't you love this? They fucking use this all the time, that word, arbitrarily. That's what they say. We hear that same fucking word on C-SPAN all the fucking time from the goddamn GOP. Arbitrarily. I am fit to be tied over this chapter, you guys. In quotes from Goffman and Tamplin. Dr. Thompson means that if the rate limits of radiation at the reactor were set at 1% of the 20 of the part 20 limit, but the operators found that they could not keep the limits this low, then the reactor would have to be shut down. Unquote. Back to what Dr. Thompson is saying. This would materially reduce the reliability of this plant as a power source. I think that the AEC has an obligation as a responsible group to be sure that the reliability of these plants is not reduced by making these standards too low, just arbitrarily. Holy fuck, there's that word again. Quote by Goffman and Tom, Tom Tamplin. 
By reliability, he means its ability to continue to provide power. He is not talking about reliability in terms of safety, unquote. Chairman Holyfield. Of course, if safety standards are too restrictive, the various attempts to comply with a too rigid standard would increase the probability of trouble from te a technological standpoint. Is that not true? Dr. Thompson, if the radioactive effluent standards are too rigid, rigid in my own mindset at least, there are some very grave worries that I have concerning whether this may not reduce the ultimate safety of the reactor plant itself. If one begins to push too hard on holding down effluents, one may, as a result, affect reactor safety adversely. What the fuck? Listen to how this bastard twists this information. For instance, we say we say we uphold Oh my god, I can hardly read this. For instance, say we uphold all the tritium in the plant. Excuse me. For instance, say we hold up all the tritium in the plant. This tritium makes very high levels of tritium in the air inside the containment. Then the tendency is not to inspect the plant so often. Another example. In the boiling water reactor, there are those who would cut down the effluent that is released into the stack too strenuously and too early before techno technical feasibility for doing this has been demonstrated. It may, may well be that Okay, I should read that again so you guys can understand it. I did, but I don't think it sounded very good. In a boiling water reactor, there are those who would cut down the effluent that is released through the stack too strenuously and too early before technical feasibility for doing this has been demonstrated. It may well be that as one moves to a very long holdup of gases in the boiling water reactor effluent system, and a lot of gases which come out of this plant are really hydrogen and oxygen. Oh, they make it seem not so hard. We know H2O. Which are disassociated in the core of the reactor. There is a possibility that unless one is very careful, you will induce an explosive hazard where no hazard existed before. In other words, if we keep to the high standards, these fucking nuclear power plants explode which is what I'm doing. I think I should end here. Holy motherfucker. I am sorry to cuss you guys. I I think the reading speaks for itself. Wow. Remember, remember the 5th of November. No fucking wonder these nuclear fucking bastards are going after Dana Dernford. Please, I hope everybody will start squeezing out all their spare funds to give to Dana until he's out of trouble and we get this bullshit cleared up. Because you know what? We're being led a fucking pack of lies that is killing the planet. And it is bullshit. The information's right here in this book. And if these books, I bought this book for five bucks online. I guess what I guarantee you, you go there right now, I guarantee you it's probably at least 20 bucks, 10, 20 bucks. <sighs> Sorry to be angry, you guys, but that made me angry, especially after the emotional roller coaster I've been on today. So. Thank all of you for being here. Thank you for listening. Share this video. Please join the Age of Fission radio show Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We need your voice. Frankly, UCY.TV needs your numbers. We need to get the radio station listed worldwide. And as many people as can listen will help. It's the one venue where we get real information. We get geoengineering. We get... Uh, Nuclear Hot Seat, The Age of Fission, The Post-Ignorance Project. It's the one place we can get lots of information about radiation and the harm it causes us. Put your courage feet on, you guys, because guess what? As we've seen, we definitely need them. <laughs> Ciao.